This is the Arduino based Marantz receiver volume monitor that I created. Um, you can see that it's showing right now that it's tuned to my Xbox One. The volume is at 51.5 and, and it's a 7.1 channel input. Um, the problem we have is that normally my receiver, which displays everything like that on the front, is behind this cabinet. So we can't tell if it's on or off and we don't have the ability to uh, see how loud it's going to be. Um, so we created this thing. I'll bring it down here so you can see. That's 51 and a half. Xbox One 51 and a half. And as I turn the volume up and down, you can see that it actually changes the volume on the, the display. I turn it back down. And I can even uh, switch the inputs so that it uh, now is on the Roku. I'm getting a stereo input. What you'll see here is we have a 1602 display with a potentiometer that controls the backlighting. Um, when the backlight is turned up enough that it's easy to see from the couch, uh, it becomes difficult to film, which is why um, the contrast had to change when I was uh, zooming in. The box that I made is actually a box that was one of those ready to finish boxes from Michael's. Uh, it didn't have a top on it so I cut the pattern out of the bottom of the box this was actually the top of the box originally uh, then I took a little piece of plywood that they sold for a dollar um, cut it down to size added a little bit of uh, hardware here so that you can open and close it and a couple of hinges and if you open it up you'll see that we've got um, just some craft foam that holds the Arduino itself down in here and a little bit of padding to keep it in place so that once I close the box it's held to the front and it doesn't move or anything. I cut some holes in the side here for an Ethernet cable and for the power cord. The components that I'm using are a 1602 shield for Arduino. It comes with some buttons here. Uh, I'll show you how I've made use of those as part of the setup procedure in a little bit. Um, right below that we have the Ethernet shield and uh, below that is the actual Arduino itself. What you'll notice is that everything is stacked up on top of each other by just uh, connecting headers from the one shield onto the uh, board below. Um, I did have to build a little bit of an extension for the 1602 shield because if I didn't then this piece here at the top of this board would end up running into the spot where you plug in the Ethernet cable. Um, I've got it powered by a separate power supply. When you're developing it'll you can power it by USB but I bought a, a separate power supply so that it can just run all the time uh, just be plugged in. When you first plug it in or when you reset it, it uh, gets a DHCP address and then it asks you if you want to run setup. If it's already been set up, then you'll see that after a couple of seconds it uh, finds the receiver's IP address and it starts requesting from the receiver what the current status is and inputs and everything. Uh, I'll show you the setup really quick. If I reset the program, it'll reconnect. It'll ask me if I want to run setup, and I do. And then uh, you'll see that there's a little cursor there that I can move uh, left and right, and I can um, increment and decrement. each of the individual uh, items. And once I've selected the right receiver IP address, I can just hit select, there it's set, and now it will start pinging again. So that's how I got around having to hard code the IP address for the receiver into the program itself, which is something that you actually see uh, fairly commonly. 
This was a pretty fun little project. I learned quite a bit while I was doing it. And I will post a link to the blog article that I'm writing that will show you all of the different parts that I used and link you also to the code that I used so that if you want to make one of these yourself, you can.